She has actual candy crabby apples. Crabby, uh, candy. Yeah, candy. Yeah, candy. Candy. Yeah, candy, there you go. I don't know why I got that guy. But anyway, <laughs> you go ahead and get your sandwich, your little uh, candy sandwich there. And uh, you can just enjoy, man, that great preaching and spirit order service, invitation, counseling. I really need some counselors. I really do. I need some more people that will come down. How many of you have noticed that over and over again? Amen. That more and more people are coming to the altar. Have you yep. noticed that? So they need counsel. You say, but these are brothers and sisters who have been around for a while. It doesn't matter. Exactly. They need help. They need counsel. They need to talk to somebody. Okay? Those of you who are ushers, if you would just uh, go through the social hall and just make sure everybody's in here, ushers and leaders, to make sure everybody comes in, because I know some are still kind of milling around, and that will be fine. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the morning. I praise you for all that you'll do today as we yield ourselves to you. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you've given to us to live the Christ life. There's nothing better, dear Lord God, than to see you glorified in that way. I'd ask, dear Lord, today that our minds would be set for you, that our hearts would be open to you, that our thoughts, dear Lord God, would be in tune with you. Give us your strength, dear Lord God, for certainly we're in need today. Won't you just be, dear Lord God, with all of those that are involved today. I thank you, Lord, for Gary Black, dear Lord God, being able to preach up in Pennsylvania this morning. Thank you for our college group being able to go and sing and be in different places today as well. We glorify you that the impact of our church is far past the walls of this church. Amen. And that you will finally be glorified in this day in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Stand together, if you will. And before we sing, we have to sing Happy Birthday. Oh. Okay? Because Jacob, yeah, Jacob, let me see you. Come over there. There he is at 18 years old today. Give him an applause, everybody. <laughs> Coming in, 
I realize that the back is kind of full over here, definitely full in the back over here. But there are two pews right here. And so you can have them come in the side here, and there is space up here for people that are coming in. On the third, here we go. He will never, never be
use this video in our hearts to understand the importance of salvation in Jesus' name. Well, first of all, we are all born sinners, and sin causes death and separation from God. There are two types of death. The first death is our human body dying, but the second death is our spirit being cast into hell, which is eternal suffering. Because we all have sinned, we can't redeem ourselves. Our sin nature separates us from God. We need a perfect human sacrifice to die in our place. We need that sacrifice to redeem us, to mend that broken relationship with God. That sacrifice is Jesus Christ. Amen. We need to be cleansed from our sin by His blood. Yes. Jesus is a perfect sacrifice because He is sinless. He did not inherit sin because He was born of a virgin. Even though Jesus is fully human, He is also fully God. Amen. To be sacrificed, he died in our place. Then he conquered death by rising from the grave three days later. Because he did this, we can be saved from sin. Amen. So what are you to do to be saved? We can't do anything. Only Jesus can. By yes, dying and right. rising again, he paid for our sins. We need to accept his gift. Just ask Jesus to save you. He won't reject you. That's right. Those who are saved repent of their sins. That's right. That's right. Yeah. This doesn't, however, mean that if we sin, we are not saved. Mm -hmm. right. We are to change our way of thinking. Instead of choosing to sin, we are to choose not to. Amen. We cannot lose our salvation. Amen. Amen. Choosing to put your trust in Jesus is the most important decision you'll make. Amen. Amen. Lord yes. I'll tell you what, they didn't Amen. Even think one of those verses, though. <laughs> 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 yep. Way, yep. I tell you what, too, though, those of you who are fast readers, God bless you, because you could. And if you just were to write down some of those words and some of the, what I call, addresses to the passages, boy, I'll tell you, that's a good thing to do. Do this. If you're really interested in knowing how to be saved, Come right down the aisle during invitation, or even now. You say, man, I need to get saved right now. Walk on down here. That's okay to do, all right? Anytime during the service. Yeah. You go ahead and do that. Right. Also understand that if you're a little bit nervous about being in front of people, grab a track and then walk out and read that. You know God is a patient God. We ought to be too. Amen. I'm not going to ask you at this very second. I'm going to tell you this, though. Today is the day of salvation. Right. Today yeah. is the accepted time. Amen. Any man that will deny him before men, he says, I will deny him before my Father, which is in heaven. So yes. don't be embarrassed about it. Just a little while ago, I had a little bit of a struggle and uh, internal conflict with someone that I had met. And they said, uh, I don't want you to talk to me about my soul. That's a private matter. No, it's not. It's a very public matter. <laughs> It's a very public matter. You going to hell means that we, as human beings together, need to be concerned about you. Right? Yeah, that's right. And that's a public matter. Yeah. You don't see somebody's house on fire down the road and say, oh, that's a private matter. That's <laughs> right. right. That's no, right. it's not. We need to help each other. We need to yeah. be there for each other. Yeah. It's a silly thing to call that yeah. a private matter. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and verse 3 says this. I fear, lest by any means... As the serpent beguiled Eve, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and verse 3. I realize I said that quick, Richard. Uh, but 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled, fooled, deceitfully misused Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Yeah. The title to today's message is, what about Pastor Seeker's involvement? What has he been doing through all of that? Is he a false teacher? Is Pastor Seeker a false teacher? Well, you'll find out today because I'm going to teach. <laughs> and then you'll learn if I'm actually trying to add or subtract from the scriptures. You know there are three kinds of teaching. Two that are deceitful and one that is clear. The first kind is application. I can give you any kind of application I want from the Bible. I can even make you think that uh, somehow drugs are a good thing. Okay? I can do that. 
I can take the scripture out of its context and apply it any way I want. The second way is to subtly misuse the scripture. And understand this. Subtly misusing the scripture is not exposition. It's personal interpretation. So I can personally interpret it. Or I can expose what's already there. Amen. And that third thing is the only thing we style to do here at First Baptist Church. Ushers, why don't you come and we'll take up our offering. Father, I thank you so much for the day. I glorify you for the incredible sacrifice that many men and women are making in this church. I watch these 20 or so individuals who have become leaders of various areas. And these 59 that met on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock to bring all the other 200 or so in our church under the umbrella of involvement, enjoying fellowship with you. Father, there was nothing better than to involve ourselves in the charity of the church, the true love of helping those that are around us. Truly, dear Lord God, it's the most selfless thing we could do on earth to involve ourselves in our local church. Help us, Lord, to do much more than warm a few. Father, make it so that we warm hearts. May we, O precious Lord, be heart warmers, dear Lord God. And may we honor you with that. In Jesus' name.
first choice, second choice, and third choice. Okay, big ticket, middle size ticket, small ticket. The kids, all children, just get one ticket. It's just the yellow ticket, and they put theirs in wherever they want to do. There'll be boxes on all the tables. So you ready? One, two, three, go. Hey, leaders, why don't you head out first? All the leaders of tables head out first. Yeah. Man, guys and guys say, well, I'm just going to sit here. Oh, don't do that. Yeah. Empty the auditorium. Get on over there and check it out. Empty the auditorium. Get on over and check it out. And leaders. Leaders, if you see somebody still sitting in here, talk with them. Ask them if they'd like to get involved, okay? Jerry, you're welcome, buddy. If you'd like. Oh, that's a good idea to wait until they're passed. That's good. That's good. Kathy, you going to get involved? In your church? Well, everybody's doing it. Everybody's filling out a ticket, even the ones that are involved, just to make sure, because otherwise you're like, huh? You haven't? Okay, you want to know this? Oh, you did it on your own. Oh, I see. Okay, I get it now. I get it now. Kathy probably already filled hers out. All right. Probably made it clearer. 
one. You guys already did everything. And you guys thought you probably had. I saw you over there late. You're just so excited. You're so excited. You're so excited. Oh, yeah. Did you get your chocolate? Oh, you're me. Those chocolate things they have. I'll get it to him. Go on over, guys, right. and I'll take care of this, but Hey, I'm sure you guys got the offering. You did.
with complete envy. Complete in thee, no words of mine, Mistake to the Lord, a place divine. Thy blood hath poured it bought for me, And I am now complete in thee. Complete in thee, no more shall sin, Thy grace hath conquered, reign within. Thy voice shall bid the tempter flee, and I shall stand complete in thee. May justify, O blessed thought, and sanctify salvation wrought. Thy blood hath poured and bought for me, and glorify thy spirit shall be. I need a choir director. 
Man, I'd probably be uh, interested in Jack directing the choir at this point. You know? <laughs> I mean, I'm just praying that God will bring somebody who said, well, I don't know music. Jack doesn't know music. I put him in there right now. You know what I'm saying? So don't be worried about it. I just want to I just want it to be God's will. That's really my prayer and my hope. So pray about that. The next really, really big event is coming up on the 15th of October. That is our carnival. It is an international carnival in preparation for the missions conference, which starts two days later on the 17th, October the 15th. I did make this wrong. It should say 4.30 to about 9 o'clock. That Friday night, 4.30 to 9 o'clock, because a lot of people are working. Our workers will be working right towards the end of Friday. And so I want to make sure that they, on Thursday night, let's see close. On Thursday night, for those of you who decide to sign up and do a booth for the International Carnival, uh, this is, listen, let's just say it frankly, it is to replace Halloween. I hate Halloween with a passion. Mm-hmm. A lot of people say, well, I all this stuff. You want us to think about dark, d- devilish things? No. You want your kids dressing up like demons and witches? And no. What does it matter with us as a nation? Do we not get it that that's evil and wicked and ought not to be thought of? The Word of God tells us to have things thought of as light, things that are pure, things that are just, things that are holy. These are what we're to think of, not being, I don't know, what does that do with the fangs? Dracula, you know, what's the world? Going around, oh, we're going to suck people's blood. Oh, that's a good thing to teach your kid. Really, really good idea. Is it? Hey. Do all you can to get away from the idea of Halloween. All right? Its foundings were evil. Its thinking today is evil. Yep. Be children of darkness? No. no. Be children of light. light. Okay, let's do that. And let's have an international, bright, and exciting, extremely bright, light-filled carnival. Okay? And if you want to dress up like anything, dress up like something that is maybe light-filled, you know? Something like, dress up like Earl Towers, okay? He, it's it's mission. He, he's one of the most, most bright people I've ever known. Dress up like Earl Towers, you know, yeah. It's international. Dress up as a country. Oh, so you can dress up like the country. There you go. Dress up like a, a, a Spanish person or French, what the French would put on. Put on your African garb if you have African garb, you know? That's a great idea. Why? Because missions, man, it's all about international, okay? So we'll look into that and see all of that later on. But I'm excited about it. We'll talk about meals and all the stuff that's coming up. Okay. My wife and I are going to sing to you this morning. Amen. Amen. <coughs> and we're going to attempt to do this without the music, but I'm going to cheat, if that's okay with everybody. <coughs> Oh, 
2 Corinthians, if you will, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, I really appreciated the way the people got involved today. It was amazing to me to see how many of you are interested, those who are thinking, those who are praying, those who are wisely considering what God's will would be for you. We do understand, we all get it, that warming a pew is not the point. Right. Warming hearts would Amen. be the point. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 says this in verse 1, Would to God you could bear with me a little of my folly. I say that every morning. I think to myself, I wonder if my church is going to bear together in my folly. <laughs> Why? Because I like silliness. i got to tell you, how many of you enjoy life? You just enjoy it. Crazy, not take that. The so word of God tells us that the man of God must be sober. Yes! I haven't drunk a day in my life, okay? I haven't taken a single drink. <laughs> but as far as any silliness is concerned, i got to ask you to forgive me. I just enjoy being silly. I enjoy having fun. I enjoy that. You know, I think of Paul in the middle of, again, we talked about that earlier, but I think of Paul in the middle of, 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 of the jail, just singing his lungs out. In the middle of all that pain and suffering, I'm telling you, this week, uh, it rained a little bit here and there. Right at the beginning of this week, I had to deal with my goats. How many of you know I raise some goats, deal with goats? Well, in that particular circumstance, it started to rain, and I realized they're not using both shelters. I wonder why. So, you know, goats hate water. They hate it. They get one drop of water on them and they run, and they want to get under some shelter. I had two shelters for the seven of them, okay? And uh, those two shelters are plenty of space, but what ends up happening is one of those shelters got a puddle in it during this rain, and they would not go in that shelter. So all of them are trying to cram themselves into this other shelter, and I had to make more space for them, so I put a piece of plastic over the top of it. By the time I was done, I was soaked from head to toe, just soaked in that rain as it's coming down. And here was the added bonus. I had been working with hay this fall. How many of you know what hay does to skin? Brad, you don't know what hay does to skin. Do you? Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. It's like little tiny needles in your flesh. And as I was getting this stuff done, I just I didn't think about it. I, had, I thought, man, I got to get them in. So I was grabbing the bales, and I didn't want to hurt my back like I had done before, so I wasn't leaning over. I was being a good little boy, Daddy, and I got underneath <laughs> those bands like this. But what ended up happening was they got all over my body, from here all the way down to my legs, and I was just, you know, they had stuck in all over. And so while I'm working, I couldn't go inside because I had to get done here, but while I'm working with them, I start feeling these little pinpricks all over them, and I start to itch, which is the worst thing you can do. Because when you start to scratch and itch, I'm telling you, with hay, it gets worse and worse. Uh -huh. Now, here's what I got through all of that. When you are going through the worst of times, you may be a folly-filled individual, lots of fun and ha-ha-ha, but in those moments, that's really when you know if you're right with God. Mm -hmm. When you're wet from head to toe, when yep. the hay is all over, and you think to yourself, no one can be right with God, so wow, Lord God, I really do this. I mean, it's rough being right with them in the middle of the worst of times. Tell me that's not the case. So the question then becomes this. Is your pastor a false teacher? Is your pastor one of those that gets up and preaches one thing and then lives a completely different lifestyle from what the Word of God said? Am I what I ought to be? When we talk about involvement, the first thing you want to know is that your leader is involved properly. Tell me that's not the case. You don't want to be thinking, well, good night. We're doing all this work and pastor's sitting at home eating bonbons. What's the deal here? I actually did that this week. I'm just <laughs> all week long, you want to know your pastor is working. You want to know that his stuff is doing what it's doing. I mean, goodness gracious, is there all this uh, material and the things that you're doing with the teenagers and the things related to mine and social, all the benevolence. Is pastor involved? Is pastor involved in the church? Or is he a liar? Is he a false teacher? I want you to think about three things. I want you to do this. I want you to listen up. I want you to lighten up. And I want you to learn up. Okay? Let's do that again. Let's say it. Okay? You ready? Let's listen up, lighten up, and learn up. Listen again. Listen up, lighten up, and learn up. So what to God you could 
bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me, verse 2, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. Do you believe that? Yes. That Pastor Barry is jealous of you yeah. with godly jealousy. <laughs> when I come to you and I say, are you going to get involved? Do you think that benefits me somehow? Do you think, oh, he's just getting paid extra if I get involved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pastor Earl's giving him 10 bucks a head. You know? <laughs> Do you really believe that? Pastor Earl, thanks, by the way, Brother Earl. I don't know. I, but in all seriousness, my friends, I don't get paid more for getting more people involved. You know my reason for that? I'm jealous of you. I'm jealous for you. Why? God wants his people working for him. Amen. Amen. And when I see an individual that might have a contrary wise thought regarding that, I think, oh, dear one. I want the best for you. I do not want you being in heaven with less. I want your mansion to be glorious and bright. I have to give an account for every one of you before right. God. Right. And my goal is to see you in heaven 100%. 100%. You know what I'm saying? You get up there and people are just like, ooh, first Baptist church is she for what a glorious blessing. Now, it's more than that. It's you individually. You stand before the Lord. And he says, Judith, give me an account. Patty, give me an account. Not of your sinful past. No. Give me an account of your Christian walk. Yeah. Were you all out for me, child? This is God. Were you all out for me? I mean, were you moving? <laughs> were you moving to warm heart or warm up you? Mm -hmm. So you say, Pastor, is that the reason you get behind? Oh, my friends, think about it. What do I have to gain? Honestly, think about it. I bang my head against the wall every day in favor of every one of you by God's grace. Nothing extra is given. It's a lot of passion, Michael. Tell me. You have been in the ministry now for how long? Since May the 1st. Yeah. <laughs> June, July, yeah. August. I want you to tell these people. It's a really easy job, right? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing every day? Do you have any time for Judith? I mean, there's got to be because I told you to, but if I didn't tell you to, really, would you have time? It's easy to get sucked right in. Yeah. It yeah. really is. <laughs> Why? Because people are important. Yes. Needs are important. People need things. People are constantly need counseling and love and concern. Listen, when you get a call from a dude at 3 in the morning about to shoot his head right straight through from one end to the other, i got to tell you something. It is hard for pastors to receive that call. It is hard to know what to do. It's hard to know if I should get up out of bed and leave my wife there alone and my family alone and deal with this circumstance. It is difficult. But you, my friends, have to be my focus. Now, how do I do that? Balanced family and all the rest. Look again at verse 2. I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. Not just any kind of jealousy, but godly, balanced, pure jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Who is speaking here in verse 2? Who is speaking? Who's actually writing this? Who? Paul, the Apostle Paul. He's under inspiration of God. We're using it today. It is obvious, clear interpretation that this is the heart of every leader, every pastor, every person who ever disciples another person. I am jealous of you 
with godly jealousy. That's, that's the heart of every pastor. But Paul is writing to them to say to them, I want to give you this understanding. And then, once you've got it, enjoy it. Okay, listen now. Once you've got it, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Release yourself into joy. Release yourself into peace. Release yourself into the understanding that he's got you. He's going to take care of you. He loves you. Oh, dear ones, listen. He loves you. So what can I do? I can lighten up. Hey, listen. I can lighten up. Paul first says this. What? The first thing. Say it with me. Listen up. Oh, you weren't listening, were you? <laughs> okay. The first thing. One, two, three. Listen, listen up. up. There we go. You listen up to me because my heart is breaking with jealousy, with godly jealousy for you. But once that's been installed, looking at verse 3, I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. That is in Christ. Learning up. <coughs> Listening up. Lightening up. I want you to get this real quick, if you will. There is an alerted caution in every church that people can get away from God. How many of you have friends that are away from God right now? All right. They're Christians. You know they're saved. But it's breaking your heart because they are away from God. So your hand up. Just keep them up. Keep them up. Just in these few pews right here, there's more than 20 hands. My friends, there are people everywhere that are falling into darkness. And you and I have to help them to understand, listen, being Christian is simple. It's not complicated. The simplicity that is in Christ is just this. Follow me. Okay, I will. And that happens over and over and over again. It happens every second. It happens every minute that the Lord is saying, follow me. Yeah. Well, how do I follow you, Lord? Well, <laughs> obey. Amen. Obey. Brian Nybert is with the Lord Jesus Christ right now. And he and Johnny worked with us down in Uruguay. Brian died some months ago. I love that man. One of the things Brian used to say was, you know, Pastor, I love the sheep, but sheep bite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a phrase. You know, Pastor, I love the sheep, but sheep bite. You know what I learned about goats? They're worse than sheep. <laughs> That's what I learned. I mean, sheep might bite, but goats buck, okay? They butt you in the head. They go after you. I mean, you're there working around, and especially if one of them lady girls is in heat, that guy's nuts, oh, man. He's just like, ah, man. You heard that? They do. Ah, you know? You guys ever seen a video of a goat on, on video on, on YouTube or something? They actually do kind of scream. They go, <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. That's exactly how they sound. W all like, Now, if you're sitting there saying, that's just uncouth. I can't believe he's doing that. You do that. Spiritually, that's what you do. <laughs> Every, every person comes to me at least once in their time in the church saying, Pastor, this is going on. I can't believe it. I don't understand it. You just don't know it. It's one of those years where it's going. And I'm just I'm sick and tired of it. I'm just going to live up. What are you doing? You're going, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Lighten up. Lighten up. Enjoy life. Hey, there's a nice little phrase. I love it. I believe that it's transliterated from the scriptures. It's not translated from the scriptures, but certainly transliterated from the scriptures. Enjoy the journey. Yeah. 
Rest in your Christ. Look at Hebrews chapter 3, if you will, for just a minute. Hebrews chapter 3. If you go, you'll find these very important words right towards the end of Hebrews chapter 3. You read this, but with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that sinned, whose carcass is fell in the wilderness, to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest? To whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest? But to them that believe not. Why do we get upset? Why do we get bothered even as Christians? We believe God. We don't trust God. We don't trust that he has everything in control. We don't trust that he's going to do everything he wants to do in this church. Trust in him. So we see that they could not enter in because of what? Unbelief. Let us therefore fear. Oh, my friends, be concerned. This morning in Sunday school, we dealt with that, didn't we? Some of you were in Sunday school. Lift your hand if you were in my Sunday school back. Do you remember us talking about that important facet of thinking about the largest stadium you've ever been in in your life? And then not thinking of God down there on the floor, but that he is bigger than the stadium. It ought to scare the living daylights out of you. And when you go home from this service, do not kick the dog and beat your wife. Get a holy fear of who God really yeah, is, and it will lead you through life. Why? Because fear is the beginning of wisdom. And you'll live your same self that Jerry, you know, when you walked in and you said, Hi, Pastor, how are you doing? When five minutes over, you're going, I can't believe, kids, be quiet. What's the matter with you back there? Don't you know we're going to church for Christ the Lord? <laughs> <laughs> Are you making confessions now? Okay. Are you making confessions? <laughs> oh, my friend. Tell me this isn't us. Uh-huh. But, can I tell you this? In Christ, I have a jealousy for you that won't quit. I desire for you to be the same dude at home that you are here, that you are at work. Man, be the same guy. And rest in Jesus Christ. Is it okay to bring up things? Man, it's a whole reason for involvement. (laughs) The first of the month, everybody that is involved in involvement with the E evangelism, we're going to meet together in my office at 6 o'clock on Wednesday night. Every second of the month, we're going to meet together with those that are in the preaching group. Every third Wednesday of the month, we're going to meet together in my office with all of those who are involved in intercession. And then the fourth Sunday of every month, we'll be doing uh, communications, okay? When there is a fifth Sunday in the services, we'll deal with involvement at 7 o'clock. Every one of those things deal with, man, I've got lists of things that need to be dealt with. Who buys water? How are we going to fill that closet back there? When do the ushers actually get trained to do their job? Because we need training among ushers. How are we going to train people to fill out visitor's cards for those that are coming in? How are we going to train people? I was at a church a little while ago. They don't even call it a church. In fact, they don't want to call it a church. This is really strange to me. I don't understand it. I think the Bible says that uh, Jesus Christ was the founder of the church, right? Not the social club, not the gathering, not the fellowship. Okay? He founded the church. But I was in this place, and man, they outdid us by a mile. I could not criticize them. I wanted to, but I couldn't. The minute I got on that property, there were parking lot attendants out there. You know, every service I see people leaving because there aren't enough spaces. They don't know they can park on the grass, and none of us care enough to tell them. That's a real problem, including the pastor. What's the matter with me? Shouldn't we want to build our congregation? They say, Pastor, look around. Yeah, this is not enough. Let's go for more here. Let's keep going. Why? The souls of men are dying and headed to a Christless hell. We're not here to play little games in church. We're here to see God move and see growth. I got on that property. The parking lot attendants put me right where I was like, man, this is an awesome parking spot. Wow. I walked up to the door. The lady at the door, she opened the door and said, let me get that for you, sir. Is this your first? Oh, it's so good to have you. Hey, and then somebody across, hey, man, God bless you. So good to have you. Come on in. Hey, you know, they're all through the lobby. Oh, are you new? Oh, it's good to have you. I was like, dude, I need to get saved again. I don't know. <laughs> We're doing wrong in our church. Something's going on. 
So where are we headed with all that we're going through right now? I want you to know something. That was not a mistake. That happened to me on this last Thursday night. Yeah. And God just said to me, this is what I'm going to give you, son. <coughs> this is what we're going to have, First Baptist Church. People who are responsive, people who understand the need, people yeah. who are out doing things, people that are not warming views, that are warming hearts. Hey, mm, that's good. Can we do something? Let's just do something to end our service today. Think of somebody in this room that you don't talk with much. And decide right now, I'm going to talk with them as I'm going out. Now, I'm not going to ask for a raise of hands, but wouldn't that prove that you were a warmer of hearts rather than a warmer of views? Wouldn't that prove that? You know the simplicity of this in Jesus Christ? Let me tell you how simple it is. He says this, and then think about it for our sanctification process. How many of you realize we're in the process of being sanctified? Right. Sanctified. Amen. Sanctified. The Spirit of God is sanctifying it. Pastor, we're already made it. We're there. Let me not be sticking around the flesh. It's just as evil as it's always been. It'll never get better. Never until it's glorified and we're in heaven. But right now, by God's grace, he is taking steps, taking steps, taking steps. Daddy, I'll never forget that little photo that you had, that little picture that you had at Sunshine Baptist Church down in the basement where a little kid was sitting there and he's praying like this. And he said, <laughs> it says on the side of the dog, uh, uh be patient with me. God's not finished with me yet. Yeah. Amen. But if you're here and you still haven't received Jesus Christ, there wasn't the time. Listen, I'm not talking about religious stuff. I'm saying there wasn't the time and the place where you said that, look, I don't care. Say, I've been going to church 38. That doesn't matter. If there was not a time and a place that you sacredly said to the Lord, I can't anymore. I need you. Lord God, I know you died for me. That blood cleansed my sin. Hey, accept the fact that you're a sinner. You can't get there on your own. Believe you to die on the cross for your sin. And that Christ Jesus was raised from the dead by his Father. Mm -hmm. And then, just repent. Yeah. Repent is a big word. I know it's a big thing. A lot of people get it confused. And I'll say, what does repentance mean? And everybody will say, asking God to forgive you and being sorry. Hey, is that what repentance is? Mm -hmm. Asking God to forgive you and being sorry? No. no, what is it? Turning around. Turning around. That's one of our new converts right there. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Turning away from the darkness and seeking God. It doesn't mean you're going to be able to take even one step towards Him. He provides that power. Amen. But it's your decision to turn around. Amen. That's the will of God. Your decision to turn around. Brother uh, Garrett yesterday made a massive point. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is not willing that any should perish. So you know what that means? His will isn't getting done. Mm. Why? Plenty are perishing. Every day people are dying and going to hell. Every day. That's right. But it's impossible that his will not be done. Where in the world did you get that theology? You think it was his will that Osama bin Laden killed so many people? You think that was his will? No. His will is not done all the time. But is it being done in your heart? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Is his will being done in your heart? Whether you're a Christian or not, is his will being done in your heart? Christian, Christian, is his will being done in your heart with reference to this involvement fair? Are you participating in this involvement fair? Have you made it a choice? To say, man, I'm going to encourage my brothers and sisters by stepping up and putting a ticket in a box and letting people see it and letting them know I've done it. Because each and every one of us, especially the new Christians, need to see the people who are faithful and older folks participating. Why? We are one body. One body. Yes. 
And they need to see, oh man, the way the Lord directed pastor to do this thing, everybody's doing this thing that the Spirit of God is directed to do. And this involvement is important. So if you're a Christian, think along those lines. If you're not saved and you're sitting there and you're saying, man, I need Christ. I am not 100% sure that I've ever done that. I'm not 100% sure. Slip your hand up if that's you. I am not sure. Slip your hand up if you are not sure. If you are not sure that you're saved. Go ahead. Anybody? Okay. Man, it's good to see an auditorium of security. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Stand together, dear ones. Hey, we've got to get out and get some unsaved people into this building so we see some hands go up. You know what I'm saying? Every once in a while, let's just pray. Oh, God, help us even this week to see unsaved people in this building. Thank you for the many visitors today. Grateful, dear Lord God, for that. But I ask, dear Lord God, for souls. If you're scared to raise your hand, you need to come down. This is your opportunity. Would you come, please? Would you come, please? Anybody? Need to come down this aisle? What about for baptism? You need to come to be baptized? Why don't you walk down here? Counselors, why don't you come? Anyone that would participate in counseling people, why don't you come? Others are coming, why don't you come now? If you need to be a member of this church, you say, man, you know, I've prayed about this for a week, two weeks, three months, whatever. Why don't you come and be a member of this church? Say, what does that entail? Well, it means that you cease to be a pew warmer and you start to be a heart warmer by committing. Committing. Say, is that for a lifetime? No, it's for 90 days. That's all this is. It's just a 90-day commitment to do a certain thing. And then you can switch or you can decide not to do it after 90 days. You can do something else. We don't want to require you to do something that's, you know, going to take you forever. Anybody else? Anyone else need to come this morning? Anyone else need to come? Okay. All right, look up here for just a minute before we close. Those 20 or so individuals, 59 actually, that are also, I keep forgetting, the ones that are not just at the tables, but those that are uh, out uh, bringing in folks. Could you be here? Can I ask you to be here at 5.30 tonight? Is that too early? 5.30? Slip your hand up. You said I just can't do that, Pastor. Anybody? Okay. 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 All right. Oh, you can't. No, okay. You're playing. Quit playing with me, you guys. All right. I see you at 5.30, those guys. And anybody else, 6 o'clock for the big, big, big finale of the involvement. Big finale.